Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys on uh, how to make a meme rap beat from start to finish. Even if you don't know how to make beats, uh, I'm going to try and go through everything, give you guys all the keyboard commands, and yeah. So first off, uh, you have to have that dank sample. Uh, the way I look up samples the best is you can look up video game OST samples like that. And then you can go through these playlists that people have made. Aesthetic game tracks right here. I suggest um, subscribing to this guy, Final Frontier 2. Puts out a bunch of, uh, I mean, like, look, one day ago, and he's posted so many videos uh, that are different samples. Like, look, 12 hours ago. And you can just go through certain samples and th this is honestly like a good guy for samples in general so now once you've found your uh, official sample and instead of starting it right here where the audio clip starts no loop is gonna be the same no sample is gonna be the same some samples are kind of odd and quirky and they uh, don't really fit well uh, with FL Studio and you have to kind of be imaginative and work around that. So now I'm going to type in the BPM. Uh, you just go to your tempo meter uh, and then right click and hit tap and you can kind of just go along to the feel of the beat. So I'll turn on the metronome. And that sounds pretty good. I'm actually going to split it right at this fifth bar. And it kind of gets a little bit off track. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. And I actually kept another part of the uh, sample. Um, it's got a nice little flute in it. And actually what I think I'm going to do is change this to uh, 145 BPM and then what you can do is uh, click this little stretch button and stretch your sample all the way to the 5. Uh, it kind of got chopped off a little bit. And yeah, so now we have our uh, sample. Now, I also suggest since the um, pitch is a little bit turned down, uh, I would suggest double clicking on the clip, or you can double click here, or you could go into here and uh, you get the same thing. Um, but, anyways, go in here and hit stretch. That way, whenever you listen to it now, It's not pitched like the other uh, example I had in the beginning was. What I'm actually going to do as well is um, pull this, drag this way far this way. So I actually didn't um, mention anything while I was uh, recording, but, but the reason why I did that is because I wanted to take the flu out and put it as the first verse and the verses in the future. And um, I'm going to copy these, uh, duplicate these. How I did that was I highlight these by hitting control and then you can click anywhere you want. Control and then control B uh, duplicates them into the next layer. And this would be where the first, I think, chorus would come in. This will be the first part of the chorus and then I'll hit control B again and this will be the second part of the chorus. So for right now, I'm going to only select this second part of the chorus, and now we can start working on drums. I'm going to click in this pattern one, put it at the beginning of the second part of the chorus. Um, but anyways, now since we have pattern one up, we can start inserting drums. I switched from audio to unsorted because you can see where all your drums go. And now once you have all your drums selected, uh, they're, they're kind of up to you. Um, what you, how you want to do it, but I always have an 808 kick, hi-hat, clap, snare, open hat, and then anything else that I want to put in the uh, beat, I'll do it. Uh, for instance, I have this perk here. It just kind of will start out the beat like this. 
And so now once you have that, I'm actually gonna start next with the hi-hats. Before I get to anything else, make sure you right click on every single one of these channel and then uh, hit cut itself on every single one. And that basically makes it like for 808s, it's really necessary because you don't want the 808 to like go over itself and be playing over another 808 and it gets really distorted and it gets really loud and it's unpleasant to hear. So make sure you just cut itself. Next, I'm going to do some hi-hats. So I'm going to right click, hit fill each two steps, go into the piano roll and then um, copy and just paste this same pattern over for eight bars. This is the way I do it. There's tons of ways to do this. Um, I'm just not really fond of them. And the way I do it is like the only way I know how to do it. So yeah, you wanna get eight bars uh, until it hits like the nine. It has to end at the nine basically. So now I don't wanna just leave the hi-hat pattern at the same the whole time. I want to change it up a little bit by uh, Going like this, if I hit Alts and A on certain spots, it'll kind of break it up into two, and listen to that. So now it gives a little bit more variety, as you guys can hear, and I'm gonna do the same, except whenever you hit Alt and A, you can drag this little time multiplicator down. I don't know exactly how this works, but I know it'll split it into however many notes is shown. Um, so actually I'm going to change it up a little bit instead of just leaving it at this two I'm going to change it and make this four little quick hi-hats Then I'm going to hit accept and now listen And actually I don't like the placing of that so I'm going to move these up and like right here Sounds a lot better what I'm actually going to do though is bring this down a few notes here hit control B so that way it still plays that same uh, note as a uh, hi-hat but then you kind of add this little variation it's kind of cool those little variations can make your beat ten times better even spice it up a little bit more I'm going to hit alt and R at the same time uh, make sure you click on levels not pattern because pattern will give you this weird thing <laughs> so anyways click on levels turn every single one of these uh, knobs to the normal levels and then mess with this velocity level you don't want the velocity to be all the way down or all the way up because it'll give such a big variation like this Turn the velocity down closer to the uh, midway point or to the no level point. Um, you can make it up or down. I don't really think it matters because you're going to be leveling it out in the end and you're going to be messing with the uh, other settings uh, to deal with volume in the end. Now I'm actually going to do the clap because clap is easiest and then after that I'm going to do the snare. So clap, it just hits on this uh, blue mark, not the red mark, unless you're doing dance hall. And now I'm just going to copy these uh, over. And then I'm going to do the snare, which will hit right after this clap. And then just to vary it up a little bit, I'm going to pull these right here. This is just minor variation, and let's see how it sounds now. Now I'm going to mess with the kick. Kick and 808s are very different for each beat. I'm going to first go in the 808 setting before I mess with anything. And then once you're in the 808 setting, go over to this little envelope and instruments setting. Turn all of these settings down, except for the hold, turn all the way up.
to 808s uh, kicks, I'm gonna follow the almost the exact same way. Turn the velocity up always for 808s kicks, any other drums and hi-hats. Now I'm gonna mess with the open hat. And it's just the same kind of pattern over and over again. Now it might seem repetitive having the perk right here. It's kind of like two symbols, but you'll see what I do whenever I layer this actually out. Now this is what every single drum sounds like by itself. Now all together. Now with the melody. Kind of sounds a little bit ugly right now, but we'll fix that. Now I'm going to layer all these tracks. I'm just going to put them one after another. With the melody being in the eighth slot, I'm going to put a parametric EQ on this, cutting out all of the bass frequencies because I don't want that clashing with the 808. Open hat is kind of sounding a little bit distorted and along with the uh, perk that comes in the beginning. And this, I don't know what this is called, but I know you do this to kind of get rid of some nasty frequencies that are higher than others. Again, I didn't mention this in the video, but in order to get this little band that goes up, all you have to do is highlight over um, one of those numbers with the mouse. I highlighted over the fifth one. And then scroll down on, the, uh, on your mouse wheel, and then you can drag it upwards like I did using the left click and then pulling e the band up. I'm just listening for those disgusting kind of frequencies and I'm bringing the band all the way down. And there's tons of ways to EQ it, you don't have to use fruities, but this is a tutorial on how to make a meme rap beat. I don't know if a lot of people are going to honestly have good plugins. So now what I'm going to do is turn this melody down a little bit. And a new thing that I've been doing recently, which I'm like falling in love with, is putting a Maximus with a clear master preset and then putting a multiband compressor with a mastering 2.4 and then to top it off on the master I put the ceiling at negative 0.3 with a 0.97 percent um, and then turning all of the attack release and sustain envelopes down Pharaoh Vice did this from internet money he showed me this in a video now everything sounds so loud right now and so obnoxious so I'm going to turn everything down and I'll show you the levels that you need so we're gonna start off with the 808 you probably want your 808 between negative 9 and negative 6 DB decibels it sounds pretty good to me so now I'm gonna do the kick and since the kick is a little bit low I'm going to go in this regular channel by going to the channel rack and going in here I'm gonna turn the boost up now it hits at 0 dB. And if you want to make your meme rap beats like have that punchy kick like mine do, 
um, it kind of like it's it's a little bit like distorted. Uh, what you want to do is go back to the kick and actually turn the boost up even more, kind of like above the zero dB level. So now look in the mixer, see how it's it's going like above three uh, decibels. So now what you want to do. Uh, after that, since uh, it'll be like way too loud and you can still, it still sounds normal. What you can do is go into the track that your kick is on. Mine's on the two. Go into here and put a fruity soft clipper on it. And this is what it does. So it kind of gives that, that like punchy kind of vibe. But if you want to even make it worse, like you can like turn this boost up like all the way and listen now. So I'm just going to leave it like that, and now I'm going to move on to the hi-hats. I try and keep mine between the 18 uh, and 15 range. And this is all just because of that Maximus and Fruity multiband compressor there. Now we're going to move on to the clap. All right, that sounds pretty good. So now I'm going to move on to the, uh, I think this is the open hat. I'm actually going to make it mono. To make it mono, um, what you can do is just turn this knob right here all the way to the right. And see, it makes it mono. To me, it just sounds a little bit better. I'm going to make this around negative 18 decibels as well. hitting so often you don't want it to like overpower the beat this is the crash wherever the beat starts i'm gonna turn this way down i'm actually gonna leave it as stereo uh, i'm not gonna change it to mono like i did with the open hat just because uh, i wanted to fill the ears basically and i think this is the melody I think I'm going to also put another EQ on this um, and try and take out some of these high ends because it sounds like hi-hats in the background of the melody and I don't really like that. So I've mixed this a little bit more. I've turned these hi-hats up because I want them to stand out a little bit more. Um, compared to the melody, they don't stand out as much in this just because it's this certain uh, sample. Obviously, if you have a producer tag, you're going to want to throw it in. I just threw it in right at the beat. I throw all my or my tags in the beginning unless I'm doing like a uh, collab. Then I'll normally throw it like here or like right whenever one of these bars hits. I'm not even going to put this on a mixer track because I don't do anything. I already have this like delayed, reverbed, and everything. So this is what we have so far. Um, and then what you can do is right click on this pattern one, split by channel, and drag each one of these down. All you have to do is left click and drag them down. And so now what I'm going to do is highlight all of them by hitting control and then selecting all, left clicking to select all, like that. And then I'm going to hit control B, but I'm going to pull these back. There's tons of ways that you can arrange these patterns and stuff, but I'm leaving it like this. So now what you can do is arrange your pattern. I'm going to actually take the open at out and leave the crash out first. The crash will come in first and then I'll delete the crash second because I don't want the crash to repeat. This is crazy, man.
like that. And then this is the flute part. And I'm gonna leave this. This will definitely be like the, this will definitely be like the first verse that someone has. So now for the verse, uh, I'm going to take the hi-hats first and the kick, copy that over again, make a clap, maybe pull this over like that. And the way I just did that was I held shift. If you hold shift and then left click and drag out, uh, you get a duplicate, but you can place it wherever you want. And this right here, this part right here, will be kind of like the bridge, I guess that's what you call it, like the, what leads up to the chorus again. And I'm just gonna take this all, shift, and place it right back. So this is where the next chorus will hit. And there you go, so you have the first part of the chorus, then you have the first verse, then you have, I guess this is like the bridge, what leads up to the next chorus, and so now you can make, basically you can do this, hold shift and copy over here. And you don't want it to be the exact same. So what I'm gonna do here, um, right at the end of the second verse, I'm going to take this out, take this 808 out, and actually copy the main pattern from the chorus. And so as you guys can see, I put the little pause right there just to kind of build up all the hype and then that crash will hit. And then what I do uh, for the last little part, I will repeat the chorus again, but instead I will have it fade out. So actually you can go into the master thing, right click here, create automation clip. Then the chorus repeated starts right here. I'm actually gonna take out this part, take out this, um, and then just have it go like this for the rest of the time. And so now I will right click. So now I'm gonna right click right here, type in the value, make it 80 because that's what like the rest of this is in, 80%. Um, and then I'm going to end the volume right at the middle of the second chorus. And then I'm going to take this and pull it right here one bar after the song ends that way it doesn't like just sound it doesn't just end right here it stays quiet for another two seconds or so so that's really all i do for my that's all i do for my beats and then you can just hit export WAV file uh, i have like a whole folder so these are my settings i have the full song don't do pattern because it'll only get your i guess 808 pattern for me because that's what's selected up here Make sure you have cut remainder, 16-bit, stereo, make sure it's stereo, <laughs> it's gotta be stereo. And then for the resampling, I put the 64 point, I don't even know what it means, but um, you could do 512, but I think that like most sites, like I know Looperman, if you're making loops, they want you to do 64 point rather than uh, 512. I don't know why, maybe it's just because it's too big of a file size for them to handle and they want space. Um, you could put it in 512, but I re recently just put it in 64 because I don't notice a difference. And that's for Wave and then for MP3. I also make MP3s because if you're selling leases, um, like MP3 leases or, or Wave leases, um, then what you're gonna want to do is have uh, MP3 and Wave separate. You can leave the MP3 bitrate at 192. You could do 320. It just takes up more space. Uh, I suggest doing 192. It's smaller, sounds the same. Uh, do 64 point again. You could do 512. Doesn't really matter. I don't think it doesn't even change the size. It just changes the uh, rendering time. And so yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, just leave them in the comments below and I will reply back probably. And if not, there are tons of others who will help you. If you guys want to see other tutorials, uh, just let me know in the comments. And this is the final product. This is crazy, man.